that is running on that particular computer. So let me go ahead and stop it. I think all of you get the whole idea behind network miner. So that's how you perform active fingerprinting and passive fingerprinting. Active fingerprinting works pretty much all the time. Uh, passive fingerprinting does not at all have a 100% success rate, but it's not as bad as uh, you would think it is. So what are some of the solutions or countermeasures that companies can implement against uh, OS detection or to fight OS detection uh, strategies? So first of all, you can change the default values of your operating system for the various fields like TTL, ISN number, and so on, so that you can mislead the attacker by pretending to be some other operating system than what you really are. You can also use firewalls, filtering devices, or access control lists to filter out unwanted probing data packets that may be trying to find out your, um, your computer's operating system. So that is what OS detection is all about. Now, up until now, all the information gathering and network reconnaissance uh, techniques that we have seen have all been on Windows. So at this point of time, like I had mentioned earlier, for the very first time in the AFCH course, I like to actually introduce all of you to Backtrack. Backtrack is, like I had mentioned in one of my previous lectures, it's a hacker's paradise. It comes with hundreds of different hacking software pre-installed, and it allows you to actually use any of the software to perform all the steps or all the attacks or all the things that a hacker needs to. So let me actually, at this point of time, show you Backtrack and show you how you can perform information gathering and network reconnaissance using Backtrack. It's extremely easy to use. Some of you may have used Backtrack before, while others this may be the first time you're even seeing Backtrack. Either way, it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, the Backtrack that I'm going to use is going to be the VMware version. VMware version basically runs on Windows. Within Windows, you don't need to run it. Say, if you download an ISO version of Backtrack, you run it from a CD or a pen drive. So you may have to you know, um, restart your computer, boot from your CD or pen drive to start the ISO version of Backtrack. But VMware version, it plays within Windows. So how do you actually start using the VMware version? You need to do two things. First of all, you need to download Backtrack VMware version. It is, I think, 3 GB or 4 GB in size. Secondly, you need to download a free software called VMware Player. So let, let me open up VMware Player and then use it to run or boot Backtrack. So it will take a few minutes for the whole uh, boot process to take place. So if all of you look at the screen, this is the VMware Player. Uh, essentially, you need to just select you can click on open virtual machine and then select the backtrack VMware file that you've downloaded. But since I run this quite often, I'll just run it from the recently run uh, soft list. So now what happens is within the VMware player window, backtrack will start booting. So very soon you're going to see the whole uh, booting process uh, on the screen. As you can clearly see, now Backtrack is booting on my computer. Now, the best part is this is just a window within my Windows, right? So, if you're a beginner, if you've never used Backtrack before, then I would highly recommend that you use the VMware version of Backtrack. So, it's still booting in the background. It typically takes a minute or so. Now if all of you look at the screen, Backtrack is asking me to enter my username and password. So I've, I'm going to log in as root, which is the administrator, and I've entered my password. Now the f for first time users, when you try to uh, run or log into Backtrack, the username that you got to type is root. And the password that you have to type is tour. 
the password is basically the reverse of root so root is the username and the password is tour now i have successfully managed to log into backtrack but i would like to use the graphical interface of backtrack so i'm going to type start x so let me just type in in the notepad file so start x is essentially what you got to type to open up the graphical user interface of backtrack so let's wait for backtrack to open up so if all of you look at the screen this is what backtrack looks like it looks very easy to use and it is indeed very easy to use a lot of people have this uh, you know phobia of using backtrack and they think that oh it's so technical so difficult to use how will i learn it it's very easy to use now the way backtrack this is what backtrack looks like and the way it works is that it's just like windows uh, instead of the start button on the left bottom corner everything is on the uh, left top corner so you click on this applications link and then you can select it's just like the start menu you can select what kind of uh, application you want to start and so on so we want we are interested in the hacking software so all the hacking software in backtrack you can access by clicking on applications and then backtrack so if you notice there are tools from information gathering vulnerability assessment exploitation tools privilege escalation maintaining access reverse engineering stress testing and so on so all sorts of tools are available here so let's uh, get into information gathering network analysis and since we were on the topic of os fingerprinting i click on os fingerprinting and then if you notice they have nmap they have pof p0f they have zenmap as well and then they have a software called xprobe so i'll show you xprobe in a minute but right now let's go ahead and start with uh, nmap or zenmap so i've clicked on zenmap let's wait for zenmap to start and i'll quickly demonstrate some of the information gathering techniques that we have seen earlier so if you remember to perform a simple tcp connect port scan the command was nmap dash st dash p followed by the range of ports that you want to scan followed by the victim ip address or domain so i've typed that command i'm going to try and do a port scan on ntvindia.com and if all of you look at the screen literally in a few seconds it has actually displayed that there's one port open that is port 80 so you you'll realize that generally speaking nmap is much faster on on say a backtrack or any other linux operating system than as compared to windows so if you notice in this case it was not showing me any results when i port scanned imt dot edu so let me use the dash pn option so the no ping option and now in a matter of a few seconds it's telling me that there are four ports open on imp.edu that is port 21 port 25 port 53 and port 80 that is ftp smtp uh, dns and http now let's perform daemon banner grabbing using backtrack So the only thing that changes is you type SV range of ports. It's completely up to you. So I'll type one two hundred, and I'll try to use the PN option so that there's no ping that is used, so that firewalls can be bypassed. And then once again on imp.edu. so within a few seconds if all of you look at the screen it has told us that imt.edu has four ports that are open 
Port 21, Port 25, Port 53, Port 80. It also tells us the exact names and sometimes even the exact versions of the software running on each open port. Not only that, it has also identified the operating system that is running on the victim's computer, which happens to be Windows. So it's much faster than uh, ZenMap or Windows because Linux generally gives you more control over the kind of data packets that you can create. So let's now also try out the um, OS fingerprinting or active fingerprinting command. And I'm going to try it on imt.edu. So I type nmap-o-v imt.edu. So if you notice, it definitely is much faster than on Windows. It is first performed a ping scan, then it is performing a port scan. Let me scroll down. Now it's, uh, it's finished the stealth port scan, that is the half open port scan. It's actually done 40%. still performing the scan. It is scanning all the way to 49,000 port. So we have never port scanned this, this many ports. So since I did not specify the range of ports over here, it is port scanning all the different possible ports. And if I am not mistaken, there are 65,536 5, 65, different ports that are possible uh, to be open on a particular server. So it's actually scanning all 65,000 ports for us. So it's 71% uh, done now. It'll take 30 more seconds for it to finish the scan. All right, so now it's initiating OS detection. It's finished the SYN port scan. So let's see what the results are going to be for OS detection. All right, so now the entire uh, scan is over. If all of you look at the screen, it has shown us all the different open ports on imt.edu. It has also shown us all the different services or the software running on each of the open ports. And finally, it has detected the IP address or detected the operating system of the victim's computer, which in this case happens to be Microsoft Windows 7 Enterprise uh, Edition. As simple as that. So as you can clearly see, OS detection is a lot faster and a lot more detailed um, in Backtrack than as compared to Windows. So let me go ahead and close ZenMap. So that's, that's ZenMap for all of you on uh, Backtrack. Let me show you yet another operating system OS detection tool that is only available on uh, Linux operating systems. I don't think there's a Windows version available called Xprobe. Xprobe. Xprobe is not as good as Nmap or Zenmap, but uh, this is what it looks like. Now to open up Xprobe, you have to uh, open Backtrack, then click on Backtrack, Information Gathering, Network Analysis, OS Fingerprinting, and Xprobe 2. So once you open up Xprobe 2, the command that you got to type is Xprobe 2 dash V, followed by the victim domain. So let me type again imt.edu, press enter. It is now scanning, performing all sorts of OS fingerprinting uh, methods and techniques and trying to find out the operating system running on the victim's computer. 
So if you notice, it has detected the operating system to be as HP, Jet Direct, ROM, something. And it says the guess probability is 93%. So I would go with the Nmap or Zenmap results because they are definitely much more accurate and much more thorough than the Xprobe 2 results. But it's nice to know that there is an alternate software available. So that is what uh, Xprobe 2 looks like. Yet another information gathering tool that is available in Nmap is uh, Fping. So Fping is essentially a lot like ping. So let me try to uh, type in the commands. So I'm going to type fping dash c space 3 dash a followed by the victim. So I can type say google.com. So if you notice now it's pinging uh, google.com. And fping is gen just generally a, a much better version of ping than regular ping. So that's the only advantage of using fping. So let me go ahead and close that. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you before we continue with the uh, presentation is HPing. HPing should be there in, yeah. So HPing is another very good software that allows you to perform port scanning. Uh, it allows you to perform ping sweeping and OS detection as well. So HPing, if you remember, I had shown you all the commands for HPing in the previous lecture. So this is a simple example of pinging uh, Google infinite number of times. So what's important here is TTL values that we're getting from Google. Let me go ahead and stop this. All right. Uh, another thing that you can do maybe is, let's try this, it's basically going to, uh, you can use port scanning or you can perform port scanning as well using HPing. So try it out, uh, just the way you have tools for information gathering on Windows, I believe that the tools for information gathering on Backtrack are much better in terms of speed, in terms of reliability, and in terms of how detailed the output is going to be. And there are hundreds of other tools here as well that you can you know, play around with. But I think the most important tools uh, we have already discussed in this particular AFCH course. Later on in this course, there will be uh, you know, lectures that are completely on backtrack, completely dedicated to backtrack. So today I thought that Normally, I don't discuss Backtrack this early in the course, but I think Backtrack is a very important component of every hacker's life. So I thought it's important that we I at least introduce you to Backtrack as early as possible. And information gathering is a very simple way of uh, getting used to using Backtrack. So we'll come back to Backtrack uh, later on, maybe today or maybe in the uh, future lectures. At this point of time, Let's actually continue with the PowerPoint slides of the day. So we have come to an end of a very important part within network reconnaissance and information gathering. So up until now, all the different network reconnaissance and information gathering techniques that we have been discussing have all been focused on trying to identify uh, or get as much information about the victim as possible. So if you're trying to find a list of open ports, list of software running, or the operating system running on the victim's computer. We have discussed a lot of different ways of doing that. Now comes a very interesting part. Once you have identified all this information, say you know that imt.edu is running a particular software, uh, and you do a Google search, and you try to find out what the loopholes are. So, or so that was the manual way of searching, right? You manually search on Google and try to find some loopholes or vulnerabilities. So that's the manual.